We begin tonight with Tehran's response to a suspected Israeli airstrike on Iran, both more muted and restrained than the world expected. Iranian officials say that air defenses were activated at a military base and nuclear facility near the central city of Isfahan. U.S. officials say Israel fired at least one missile in retaliation for an extensive Iranian rocket and drone attack last weekend. Flashes mark the sky above Iran in what's alleged to be an Israeli attack. Iran state media reported loud sounds being heard near the city of Isfahan. The area is home to important defence facilities and a large nuclear centre. The attack prompted flight diversions across Iran. By daybreak, the incident was being downplayed. With state media reporting the city was calm and emphasising that nothing was out of the ordinary. Uh, there were some uh, loud sounds that were heard in the east of the city of Esfahan, and this was related to the air defence system, as uh, we told you and our viewers before, uh, triggered by the presence of uh, three small drones uh, that were present in that area. Other than that, nothing has happened. Everything is back to normal. U.S. officials have reportedly told media that Israel is behind the incident. Its war cabinet has been debating its response to a large-scale Iranian missile attack last weekend. Iran said it had retaliated to a presumed Israeli strike on Iran's embassy in Syria, which killed 13 people. Israel hasn't acknowledged the Isfahan attack, but its national security minister indicated he thought it didn't go far enough, posting the word feeble on social media. Oman condemned the suspected strike while Egypt urged restraint from all parties. The EU and other regional leaders are also calling for calm. We have to do all, everything possible that all sides restrain from the escalation in that region. Um, we have seen the massive attack with drones and missiles around about 300 uh, by Iran on Israel. Um, it is absolutely necessary that the region stays stable and that all sides refrain from further action. A plea for Israel and Iran to de-escalate in hopes of keeping this latest Middle East violence from spiralling out of control. All right, we've had team coverage of this story tonight. I'm joined now by our correspondents, Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem and Benjamin Alvarez Gruber in Washington, D.C. Tanya, let me start with you. What are Israeli officials, what are they saying about these reported strikes? Well, we haven't heard any comment, uh, officially at least, from uh, the Israeli government or the military. We reached out to them early in the morning to the military. Um, and uh, basically what we know is mainly from uh, Iranian state media, but also from uh, reports in the U.S. media uh, quoting U.S. officials that indicate that Israel had indeed uh, carried out uh, this uh, strike. Now, what's discussed here in Israel, that is, if this appears to be an Israeli strike, it needed uh, to uh, carry it out uh, for its uh, deterrence after the uh, large counterattack by Iran, which was in itself a reprisal to the uh, alleged uh, Israeli attack on the uh, consulate uh, compound in Damascus on April uh, 1st. Now, it appears to be uh, uh, limited in scope, and there are more and more details, of course, coming out. We don't know, mm. you know, what, more about the target. We don't know more about the scope. But this is also seen to keep it vague at the moment to mm -hmm. de-escalate an already escalated uh, situation. And we're also hearing from uh, Iranian sources that they might look the other way, saying there is no need for an immediate retaliation. And something like that could also be, uh, you know, seen in, in this uh, from the Israeli side. Yeah, yeah. Muted, to say the least. Benjamin, what are we hearing, if anything, from U.S. officials about what happened overnight? 
Well, Tanya just mentioned there that U.S. officials said that the U.S. was informed uh, before uh, this attack is something that Secretary Blinken did not address when he was asked several times earlier today at this uh, G7 foreign ministers meeting in Italy. He, but he said, and that's something that he has stressed, that the U.S. was not involved in a, any offensive. What U.S. officials have been saying is that the targets were not nuclear, uh, that this was, as Tanya just said, also a scope, not a really a big attack. But, of course, we're getting far more information from uh, U.S. officials than what we get uh, from uh, the administration. We're still waiting to hear from the Pentagon also to see if there are more briefings from the State Department to give more uh, information on and what the U.S. Uh, position is on the strikes. And, and Tanya, considering this muted response that we are getting from Israel about events overnight. What does that tell us about the sort of pressure that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is under right now domestically in the wake of the attack from Iran last weekend? Well, I think there was a lot of pressure uh, on the war cabinet to react, and we've heard it even before that counterattack by Iran last weekend took place. That uh, Israel had said any direct attack from Israel on uh, from Iran on uh, 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 Israeli soil would be uh, met with a, a response uh, from Israel. So this uh, was also then debated, of course, over the week in the war cabinet, and there was a lot of pressure, especially by the far right uh, cabinet members, but also by you know. Know, the right-wing uh, cabinet members of the security cabinet and the war cabinet um, to to respond uh, and to respond decisively as well, but also a lot of pressure from uh, Israel's allies, uh, first and foremost the United States, but also other Western leaders to uh, respond cautiously as not to drag uh, the country into uh, a wider conflict. And I think it's also interesting that there were some polls out from, uh, you know, about the uh, Israeli public here saying that they were also concerned, kind of split in the middle, uh, how Israel should respond, but also over 74% in one of the polls of the Hebrew University saying uh, that they do not want basically uh, oppose an attack that might undermine Israel's security alliance, you know, to keep this momentum of support, international support in light of this attack. But also you have to see that uh, many here are w woke up at that time, you know, to a new reality, a, a, a kind of new order here, because that was a, a direct confrontation coming out of a shadow war that was always between Iran and Israel. And right now, of course, at this point in time, we don't know what will happen next. I mean, there are many Maybe signs for de-escalation, but it could also go the other way. What about uh, the proxies and also the war, of course, between Israel and Hamas in Gaza is also ongoing. And Benjamin, that's what the Biden administration wants, right? Um, whatever happens, they want de-escalation to be the word. That's right, and not just words, but also actions. And now that we have an upcoming vote on the House of Representatives on the security supplemental for Ukraine, for Israel, and for Taiwan, many are pressing on the Biden administration to do more, to do more red lines, and also to talk uh, to both of them to say that a de-escalation is needed right now. All right, Benjamin Alvarez Gruber in Washington, Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem. To both of you, thank you. Well, now I want to bring in Ali Fatola Nijad. He's a political scientist and director of the Center for Middle East and Global Order right here in Berlin. Mr. Nijad, it's good to have you with us. So as we heard there from our correspondent, you know, we still haven't gotten official confirmation from Israel that it was behind this attack. Let me just get your opinion. What's your read? Was this an obvious Israeli attack? Well, I mean, there is little a probability that, uh, you know, uh, those attacks were carried out by any other state. So there's a higher likelihood. Uh, and also we have some reports citing U.S. officials uh, that are quite clear that Israel has been carrying, carrying out the strike. There has been international worry that an Israeli retaliation for last weekend's attack would definitely escalate this conflict. And then the counter response coming from Iran would make it even more of a bigger crisis. But that hasn't happened. How do you explain this, this muted response on both sides? 
Well, I think at this point in, in time, no one has uh, an interest, um, uh, you know, to uh, provoke an all-out war. Um, this is certainly true for the Iranian side, uh, given also the nature of last weekend's attack on Israel. Uh, you know, the kinds of weapon systems that the Iranians uh, have used and also what has happened, uh, you know, today or last night um, is also, in my view, an indication um, that uh, uh, Israel did not uh, choose uh, a fashion of attack that could provoke Iran uh, to uh, further escalate. And uh, what instead uh, seems to have been the case, um, I mean, of course, by now we don't have any confirmation about the exact nature of the attack and also the targets and also the damages. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems that this was a demonstration of power from the uh, Israeli side, uh, a signal sent to Iran that it, you know Israel can cross Iranian uh, defenses, uh, perhaps at will, and this has been a demonstration of power from the Israeli side, uh, signaling that uh, if need be, uh, you know, Israel could easily uh, target Iran in a forceful way, forceful way and especially, of course, uh, Iranian um, military infrastructure. The Iranian media have been reporting that drones were shot down near the Iranian city of Isfahan. What would make this city um, a, a target? I mean, um, you know, near Esfahan, there are a lot of uh, military, uh, you know, uh, complexes, but also nuclear facilities. Uh, but um, talking of the Iranian reaction, it's quite uh, visible uh, that the Iranians have no, uh, you know, appetite for escalation. Uh, they've been downplaying uh, this attack uh, to a uh, quite ridiculous level. Uh, in terms of saying that, you know, only three drones were, you know, uh, shot and uh, were intercepted by the Iranian side. And from uh, all we can gather so far, this attack has been, you know, uh, much more than that. But the Iranian side is uh, trying to, uh, you know, keep it low, to downplay it, if not to belittle it. Uh, that is also to not to have the pressure to respond. Uh, which is again in contradiction to what uh, the Iranian side via the head of the IRGC, the Islam Revolutionary Guard, had announced, uh, you know, uh, just following uh, the Iranian attack on Israel as a new equation from the Iranian side, which would, uh, uh, you know, which would suggest that any um, uh, attack from the uh, Israeli uh, side on Iranian assets would be met uh, with a with, with a response from inside Iranian territory. So uh, given the fact that this new equation doesn't seem to hold, uh, this signals that uh, those have been, you know, warnings rather than a change of uh, strategy. And the Iranian side is still very much worried that an all-out war could, uh, you know, uh, uh, could evolve out of uh, those tensions. And uh, in such a scenario, this would also be very much destabilizing uh, for the regime in Iran. Do you think the regime in Iran has, is realizing that maybe it's misread or miscalculated uh, the position of other Gulf states and that maybe they were counting on full support in a conflict against Israel and that is obviously not what they're getting? Uh, I don't think so that this was uh, part of the Iranian calculation that, um, you know, they're going to be supported by the uh, Gulf, Arab Gulf states, uh, um, you know, uh, against Israel. But the position of the Arab Gulf states is quite clear. They are very much interested, uh, you know, in bringing about a de-escalation because stability for them is vital uh, politically but also economically. And so they fear any kind of escalation in the region, uh, especially involving Iran. Um, they've seen that Iran uh, could be, uh, you know, very damaging to their nuclear, uh, to, to, sorry, to their economic viability, to the kinds of attacks that we've seen in the Persian Gulf region against the UAE, but also against the main oil facility uh, of Saudi Arabia in September 2019. So, uh, you know, at least since then, uh, they're extremely worried uh, about uh, destabilizing activities uh, of Iran 
uh, and um, given their understanding of uh, a relative reduction of U.S. support, they've chosen the way to seek accommodation with Iran. But currently, of course, uh, they do whatever they can uh, toward de-escalation. Ali Fatola Nejad, Director of the Center for Middle East and Global Order. We appreciate your time on this Friday evening. Thank you. I asked DW's uh, Jerusalem correspondent, Rebecca Ritters, whether there has been any confirmation that Israel was behind this attack. No, we've had no official uh, confirmation. We have reached out to the Israeli military. They haven't confirmed to us or to anybody uh, whether or not they were indeed the perpetrators of yesterday's retaliatory, or, or this morning, I should say, is retaliatory attack. Uh, that is something I wanted to preface going into this, in that pretty much everything that we know and the picture that is becoming clearer as this day progresses, we know from unnamed sources. What I can tell you is that some US officials have confirmed to the mainly US media Media that Israel did carry out this strike. That's been backed up by unnamed Israeli officials that told the Washington Post that Israel carried out this attack, uh, that it was a message to Iran. We know uh, that the air defence system in that Isfahan area in Iran was triggered and, was, and went off. And we've seen that video circulating of what certainly looks like interceptions. Uh, but that's pretty much what we know so far. As I mentioned, Israel still yet to comment. And it's likely that that isn't going to change. It certainly seems that Israel, that if this is indeed an attack from Israel, that not commenting is part of the strategy. They most often don't comment uh, on these t types of military strategies, but particularly with this one, uh, it appears, or at least analysts are saying it could be part of the plan that Israel wanted to counterattack, that they said that they had no choice but to counterattack, but they didn't want to perhaps humiliate Iran or force them to, now, to, to retaliate again. Uh, that is certainly the, the pressure that they were put under by the international community, particularly the West, Western allies, the US, Germany, the UK, EU, uh, to really kind of try to de-escalate this situation. And that appears to be the situation that we're looking at. Uh, we've heard from a senior Iranian official telling the Reuters news agency that Iran has no immediate plan to retaliate. So for now, uh, you know, certainly it's hopeful in the region and across the world, really, that this is not looking that it's going to escalate for the moment, uh, though this region remains very hot and nothing can be guaranteed here in this volatile area. Rebecca, Isfahan uh, in Iran is home to sites that are associated with the country's nuclear site. Uh, would that make it a potential target, you think? It's very difficult to say, certainly, probably. Uh, you know, we know that Isfahan does have a large air base. We know that it has a major missile production complex. And as you've mentioned, or as in that report, several nuclear sites. Now, we have had confirmation that none of the nuclear sites were hit or damaged. The Atomic Energy Agency confirming uh, what we were hearing from Iranian state TV on that. Uh, it was more likely that it was that military base or a military base in the area that was the target. And that could suggest that it was a tit-for-tat uh, attack because it was, in fact, a military base or an army uh, a, a military base in Israel that was struck by one of the missiles that came in Iran's retaliatory attack on Saturday. So, you know, we could take, take that from, from, from that, that it is a tit-for-tat attack, but certainly uh, none of those nuclear facilities being damaged in this attack. Rebecca, it is there reporting from Jerusalem. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, for more on this, let's uh, get in military expert Marina Miran from King's College London. Marina, uh, there is no official confirmation yet that Israel is indeed behind this attack. What do you think? Good afternoon, Gerhard. Well, if we look at the world news and specifically the U.S. news, um, a lot of U.S. officials have said that Israel might be behind the attack and that um, the Israel authorities had informed the United States last minute that they would launch this attack. Um, so given the targets, given the timing, today is the 85th birthday of Ayatollah Khomeini, it would seem like um, it could have come from Israel. It is very symbolic. Now, what do you make of the scale of this attack? It's quite moderate, isn't it? It is very interesting if we compare it to the Iranian attack last uh, Saturday evening, Sunday, Sunday morning. 
it seems like both countries are in a de-escalation spiral. So um, Iran made sure to launch an attack that wouldn't give Israel enough pretext to counterattack, or at least to launch a very serious attack that could potentially damage Iranian nuclear program or its air bases. Now, the Israeli attack uh, is trumping that, essentially robbing Iran of a good strategic choice. So it is interesting that both countries feel the need to respond, but to respond in such a way that it avoids a broader war against both countries. Now, Iran says that they intercepted several drones. What do you know about Iran's defense capabilities? Well, uh, last year, no, this year, actually, um, in February, there were two new air defense systems um, introduced. One is Amman, which is a medium um, range high altitude for ballistic missiles, and uh, the Azarash which is a um, low altitude air defense system. And these have been upgraded, especially the later one. Um, they are very mobile. They're working 360 degrees. So these are the official statements by the Iranian defense ministry. We don't know how well they work. And apparently um, one of the systems, the Amman one, is also capable of shooting down drones. Um, and these have been presented essentially because of the growing tension with Israel. So we have the, the specifications on paper of these two air defense systems, how well they work. We, we don't know. It remains to be seen. But apparently they have been working on these flying objects, which um, some believe to be quadcopters launched inside Iran, have been shot down by interceptor missiles. So we cannot say that Iran doesn't have any air defense capability. Certainly, given the circumstances and given the sanctions, they are working on their air defenses, understanding how crucial it is, possibly getting some input from their allies, such as Russia. Now, let's have a look at the target uh, region. Why would Isfahan be targeted? Does that send a message in itself? Yes, it is very symbolic in itself, indeed. On the one hand, we have the um, uranium enrichment facility there. And on the other hand, there is also an air base there, which feels the very old still US made F-14 Tomcat aircraft uh, purchased before the Iranian revolution in 1979. So it would seem like it is a hint, uh, presumably by Israel to say, we can reach you too. And we know where your nuclear facilities are. There is no damage to either one. But even uh, considering the fact that the Israeli intelligence knows where those bases are located and has the capability to reach them, um, nudges Iran to say, stay away from attacking us because the next attack could potentially be much more serious in the sense that one of those two objects could be damaged or destroyed, if not two altogether. It depends, analyst and Marina Miron there for us. Thank you very much, Marina. Let's now bring in Bernard Ben Talibloo. He's a security analyst at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies uh, in Washington and joins us uh, from there. Now, uh, if Israel is indeed behind this attack, would it be a rather restrained or a forceful act? Pleasure to be with you. Great to be back again. Uh, in essence, there may be a trend line here that Israel is connecting because if what is reported uh, is true, Israel has used smaller quadcopter drones, which many are alleging was involved in this attack near Isfahan, both in 2022 in a drone storage facility in Kermanshah in western Iran, as well as in 2023 January, if I'm not mistaken, near a missile production facility uh, around the city of Isfahan. Uh, by that trend line alone, it would look like uh, a likely foreign culprit would be Israel. But once you layer in the fact that even prior to the missile and drone uh, barrage, Israel uh, sustained but largely intercepted, uh, on April 13 and 14, the Israelis had promised to strike Iranian soil if Israeli soil was struck. So this is, in my view, most certainly uh, a retaliation, but a contrasting retaliation, whereas the Iranians launched uh, a volley of almost 300 projectiles, including land attack cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and one-way attack drones, uh, causing very little damage. Uh, if indeed this is the Israelis, and all signs may point to that, despite the lack of official confirmation from within Jerusalem, uh, there is a sharp contrast as to a limited scale, uh, but perhaps a more precise or effective military strike. 
So is this uh, attack then designed to not provoke any further uh, reaction by Tehran? Indeed, as much as I think the strike might be aimed at resetting deterrence, given that this is more in line with previous methods of the Israeli-Iran shadow war, previous, you could say, rules of the game that were established through behaviors uh, in the four-plus decades of the Israeli-Iran shadow war. This is also designed to tamp down incentives to escalate. You've already seen Iranian state media uh, hyping up the fact that Isfahan feels normal uh, this morning, uh, despite the, the firing of uh, uh, air defense uh, air defense assets earlier in the morning, around 5, 6 a.m. Tehran time, uh, 5, 6 a.m. Iran time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so they have an incentive to slide down the escalation ladder. While that may put an end potentially in the short term, the tit for tat directly between Iran and Israel on their territories, I don't think at all ends both their strategic and ideational competition, as well as the Islamic Republic's stated aim of death to Israel, because after all, uh, it is still supporting a multi-front war uh, against Israel, which is now still fighting Hamas, the lowest of the low-hanging fruit in Iran's terror network uh, in Gaza. Now, do you think we will see any further actions uh, by Iran, or have they sort of said what they wanted to say? The Israelis may have been also seeking to test the new or changed stated doctrine uh, as enunciated by Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Commander Hossein Salami after their missile barrage against Israel, where he said, if Iran or an Iranian interest is struck, be it inside the country or outside, we reserve the right to respond overtly and kinetically, uh, I'm paraphrasing, uh, but from Iranian soil. So this could be aimed to test that doctrine, because as you know, there were also explosions reported, but unconfirmed in Iraq and in Syria as well. Those are places where Iran has lots of Shia militia assets, as well as weapon storage facilities. So it could be designed to get Iran to uh, test that doctrine as well, rather than just de-escalate and save face. Ben Haben Talabrevev, a foundation for the defense of democracies. Thank you very much. And we can cross over now to the journalist Kristen Helberg. She's an expert on the Middle East. Uh, Kristen, this drone attack on Isfahan, do you think this actually is Israel's retaliation? Well, we still don't have a 100% clear picture, but it seems that Israel opted for something that it has allegedly done before, which is a covered drone attack by the Mossad from either inside Iranian territory or from one of the neighboring countries, which could be the Kurdish region in Iraq or the Republic of Azerbaijan. And Israel has done this allegedly before. There were several such attacks in 2022 and 2023. So if this is the case, then Israel pretty much followed the old rules of the game, I would say, instead of taking the conflict to a higher level. Mm. And this would be a rather symbolic answer, I would argue, with a clear message saying that we can hit Iran anytime, anywhere, even without having to fall back on a larger direct strike. Now, what do you expect to happen uh, next? Another tit-for-tat response by Iran against Israel. Is this going to go on? I think we are seeing a limited but a very well calibrated tit for tat. You know, we had the direct attack on Israeli territory, so Israel had to fight back and hitting Iranian territory directly. This is pretty much the equation that Iranian officials were talking about last week. But if this is it, if there's nothing more to follow from the Israeli side, then then I think that nobody is aiming at a further escalation at this moment, because this attack definitely leaves the Iranian regime with the option to not retaliate because they don't feel compelled to react to this. And the fact that the Iranian regime officials and the Iranian TV, as we just saw, are kind of down downplaying the whole attack points in this direction. We had the senior uh, officials saying that there's no plan for an immediate retaliation. So for now, it doesn't seem um, that we are uh, heading to a further escalation at this point. Will this have an effect uh, on the war in Gaza, you think? Well, I think there is one real danger here, that in return for this moderate reaction towards Iran, the Israeli government could now demand 
a free hand in Gaza and it could stick to its planned offensive in Rafah, which is something that US, the US does not want to see. And we have heard that there were talks yesterday between US officials and Israeli officials discussing these plans in Rafah. And to prevent this, which is something that Washington wants to do, I think that the US allies and other Western allies, for example, Germany, should increase the pressure on the war cabinet, on Netanyahu, by, for example, withholding weapons of war at the moment to Israel until further notice. And I'm not talking about air defense systems that obviously Israel needs to defend itself against Iranian aggression. I'm talking about, for example, munition that would be used in Gaza in a war that, according to UN bodies, human rights organization, international law experts, does not comply with the rules of the international humanitarian law. So I think at this point, to avoid a further um, offensive in Gaza, uh, the US and for example, the German government should make their support somehow conditional. It has worked out concerning the humanitarian aid that is being brought in on a larger scale. And it should um, it should be used, this kind of pressure and this conditionalizing of support for the Israeli government should be used as well now to prevent an escalation and to prevent this offensive in Rafah, which would be a catastrophe mm. for the people within Gaza. The journalist, Christian Herberg, there. Thank you very much.